Hi everybody. Welcome to week six of our Lenten series. I am Stacy, and I am the one that is guiding you through all of this and I hope that you have had an enjoyable time watching these videos. Today we are reading from the book of Mark. It is chapter 9 verses 30 through 37 and it goes a little something like this. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying, and they were a little afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were all silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. So what is this story trying to tell us? Well, let's take a let's think about um, where Jesus was living and what life was like back then. So Jesus lived in the Roman Empire, which dominated the country of Israel. The Roman Empire treasured obedience and worship of the emperor. The Roman Empire was not pleased with Jesus because he taught a different way of life and people were attracted to what he was saying, his messages. And they saw him as being disruptive because he treasured people, even the ones that the Roman Empire hated. Roman authorities became more and more frustrated with Jesus, but Jesus did not back down. This is what Jesus was speaking about when he said the Son of Man was going to be betrayed and killed. Now, the other thing about the Roman Empire is that they did not always treat children very well. And according to the historians, Romans did not believe that children had any kind of human rights. And unfortunately, girls were treated even more unfairly. They were not allowed to go to school. They were made to marry at a very early age. And just generally, little girls were not treasured. As Jesus often did, he rejected this idea and showed us that there was a, a different way, a better way. Jesus believed and taught that children are important. So when the disciples were arguing about which of them was the greatest, that's when Jesus took the child into his arms. He told them that if they welcomed a child, they would be welcoming Jesus himself. And Jesus could have said to the bickering, arguing disciples, you're all wrong, I'm the greatest, I'm the one. Don't you guys argue about it anymore. It's all about me. He didn't do that. Instead, what he did was he raised up this child, showing them, this child, and us, the greatness that we can find in children. Jesus loved to empower and the people and to those who were not appreciated. So let's imagine in this story that this child that he takes and uses as an example was a little girl. Now remember what I said, little girls weren't allowed to go to school. They didn't get to inherit anything from their families no land, no businesses. Um, little girls did not have much choice about anything in their lives. But then all of a sudden, 
for this one particular little girl. Jesus comes along and tells everyone that she is representing the Son of God. Can you imagine how she must have felt? Do you think that she felt treasured during that experience? That she felt loved and whole and complete? Probably. I would think so. So all children should feel treasured by their families and in their communities. When we're tempted to argue with one another about who's the best or the greatest, who should be in control, who gets to make the decisions, Jesus shows us people are the true treasure. And it's not about being in that top spot. It's not about being the best. It's not about having the most. It's not about being the greatest. So I want you to think, and I'm sure we all have these days, on days when we don't feel like we're a treasure, that's when you should go to someone that you trust, a trusted family member or your best friend or whoever that you can confide in and tell them that you're kind of feeling that way. I'm not really feeling much like a treasure today. And they are going to remind you of how wonderful and how loved and important that you are, just like Jesus did. Let's talk about some questions. What makes you feel most treasured? We kind of touched on this in the previous videos about what makes us feel complete or we talked about the word perfect and how that word meant something different in the days of Jesus. But still, um, what makes you feel treasured? Is it something that you do? Is it someone when they say something to you? Is it an accomplishment? And how do you know that you're treasured in your family? Is there something special that your family does that makes you feel special? Or is there something that you do that only you do in your family and that makes you feel treasured? And in those moments where you don't feel treasured or you don't feel loved, what do you do about that? Is there somewhere you go? Is there someone that you talk to? Do you write in a journal? How do you cope with that? Because that's a very important thing to know how to deal with. Sometimes grown-ups forget to give children choices or the opportunity to make some decisions. And when a child doesn't get to make choices, would you say that you don't feel like you have a lot of power or control over what's going on with you? So, is there a way that your family does something to respect or incorporate your voice, your opinion, your thoughts into decisions that are important with your family? Well, here's your activity for today. Your family activity is I'm going to give you, last time I gave you pearls to choose from about things that you could do as a family. And it's kind of like that again. I'm gonna give you some choices, some ideas of what you can do as a family, but letting the children take control of this specific experience. So it would be something like, let the children in the house choose and make dinner, with help of course. Let the children choose an outdoor family activity weather permitting uh, or okay weather permitting or so let the ch children in the house in the family choose an indoor family activity how about uh, I do this with my kids all the time because I move my furniture around constantly so I always ask them what do you think how do you think this would look what do you think we should do next so maybe rearrange uh, a bedroom um, or give them the opportunity to redecorate their bedroom? Um, or what else could you let the ch let children choose to do? Um, I know we've done on a couple of occasions, um, you know, 
one of my children has the opportunity to be the one that makes the decisions and so if they want to go have McDonald's for dinner that's what we do so anyway um, make it fun make it inclusive make it a family fun experience to remind everybody that children do have some great ideas and are worth listening to again it kind of goes all together in what we're talking about being treasured being respected being listened to being curious about what's important to those around us to get to know each other better and maybe if you let your the the young ones choose a dinner they might surprise you with something that you wouldn't ordinarily have chosen so um, make it fun enjoy your time together and that's all I have for you today we do have those coloring pages so if you want to do some coloring just send me an email real quick there's a link on the website where you can just let me know and I'll be happy to email you anything that you need and um, and I just hope that you're enjoying this experience so thanks for joining with me and let's close with our prayer today father mother parent of us all we are all your precious children some old some young you treasure us in your heart and nothing can change your love for us help us welcome and cherish the children in our lives amen i hope you have a wonderful week i appreciate you taking the time to spend with me and uh, i'll see you next time take care bye bye